Hi, I just thought I'd give you an introduction to my third scale STEM 10. Um, I've built this over many years. Um, this is uh, number three that I've built, uh, the second one for myself. Um, the first one, I uh, uh, built that and flew it as a prototype for probably a year and then um, eventually sold it to someone in America. Um, then uh, I built another one for another guy in America as a kit and uh, I'm not sure whether that's ever been finished and then I've uh, built this one here for myself um, I've only ever flown it once due to having uh, problems getting the correct batteries for the motor system um, but uh, yeah so a few people have asked about uh, how I've made the uh, made and developed the propeller system and the undercarriage so I thought I'd do a short video on um, those two things so this is the, uh, how I started out developing the propeller system. Uh, this is the configuration of the propeller in the nose when it's folded up. So there is limited space. So the propeller size for myself was determined by how much propeller I can actually fit in the nose. So um, all up it's, uh, it would span out to a 22 inch propeller. So I bought, um, the first, first thought was I could just be able to buy a, um, a 14 inch propeller, cut one blade off and use that and then effectively the propeller would start there and there. Now, um, as I learned over the uh, long time of developing it, is um, with the propeller starting out here, it just doesn't work. Um, also, the other problem I had with these propellers were way too heavy for the spring mechanism in there. So I did eventually take a mould off of them and made a hollow moulded one, which is quite a, a substantial, a bit lighter. Um, but um, as I... Sh as I proved to myself that that propeller still didn't work um, due to uh, yeah, just the, uh, the root cord not being correct at the correct distance out from the centre. So I, I was racking my brains with what to do, how to get it working and after speaking to a friend he came up with the idea of um, getting a 22 inch propeller and actually cutting um, the tip part off. So I thought, well, nothing else is working, so I'll give that a go. And um, so what I did is I cut the tip off of a propeller. It wasn't actually this type of propeller, but I cut the tip off of a propeller. I um, made a um, boss, uh, spun up an aluminium boss on the lathe and uh, made that um, plug. And then I took a mould off that and um, in the end ended up with a mould like this. So the back of the propeller had to be hollow to be able to handle the spring setup so I machined up this boss here which that bolts into the back of the mould and then you lay rovings up and lay it up in a particular way and uh, that actually eventually um, after experimenting with different pitches and whatever actually worked quite well and uh, it flew successfully um, with the electric uh, motor uh, this is the layup of the hollow moulded propeller it's just a couple of layers of uh, 90 gram carbon with a um, carbon, light, very light carbon roving spar inside and it's all done in uh, wet layout and as you can see I've made several different moulds over the years um, for that type and also had many failures um, this here is a tool that I use to drill the, to drill the propeller out after it was made because I didn't want to go to all that trouble to make the propeller and then muck up that so that's that so yeah so after that it worked quite well so I think uh, after that it was actually a 22 to 12 that was the was the correct pitch so this is the um, setup in the glider of uh, the prop mechanism. Um, so before I take the nose off I'll just show you how it works. So I've just got this large servo here that operates a, um, a shaft through the nose and that opens the opens the nose. There's a, a rail here where some roller bearings run on to keep all that located so the nose doesn't turn. Um, this mechanism here is the, um, the prop sequencer. So it's uh, um, programmed, all this is all programmed through the radio. So um, the propeller won't go back mechanically um, if the um, propeller's not, the nose won't go back mechanically if the propeller's not in the correct position. 
So, um, so what happens is I've got, this is a 3D printed mount here. There's a spring loaded um, detent in here. There's a hole in this, uh, this is the, on the back of the motor there. There's a hole in there in the correct position so that the radio gear engages that. This here turns around to the correct place, locks in, and then the nose goes back. And that releases, so as I said, that's all programmed into the into the radio. You can see the large Axie motor there, that's a 53-30-24. Uh, uh, runs on 10 cells and uh, seems to have enough power. So this shows the prop mechanism with the nose off. Um, so the Axie motor's down the bottom here, it's got like a, a, a belt drive here. Uh, the ratio of that is 1 to 1.1 1 .1, uh, just to keep it uh, slightly off so we don't get any harmonic vibrations. Um, the motor is bolted directly to this one here with this belt uh, set up here so I've basically just machined this plate up just to suit to get the correct belt tension. Um, then uh, this here is all machined out of aircraft aluminium. Uh, inside the propellers there are, um, I've wound some springs and they are captive. But as you can see, this has been sitting in my trailer for a number of years now. They're not, they're not very reliable. Um, so the next step um, I'm going to do is I'm going to make some new propellers and actually put some bearings in there so it's a lot smoother action. Uh, because probably the biggest problem I have with this is the propellers don't fold away reliably. Um, so yeah, I want to make that. That's probably the only thing I need to do to make it ultra reliable when it's flying. But yeah, they um, uh, balance the whole lot. Uh, balance all this in one hit um, and uh, yeah it uh, balances up fine has no no vibration issues okay